everyone, everyone inside and everyone outside there. Good morning. It is great again to be in the house of the Lord always, every Sunday. It is just a blessing to be in God's house with each other. We're going to lift our voices this morning and sing praises to the risen Lord. So would you stand and join us? Whatever our mood, whatever our situation, there is always joy in We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. We are accepted. We have been redeemed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say hello this morning. I count on thee, 
successful lawyer and businessman in Chicago. And in 1871, there was a big Chicago fire. He lost lots, lots of his businesses, obviously the real estate. And so um, at the same year, his son died of pneumonia. And um, so he wanted to go to Europe with his wife, Anna, and their four daughters. And then something with business held him back. So they went off in a ship to Europe. Well, he got a, he got a um, wire from his wife that there was the ship had sunk and all four daughters died in this um, the ship sink but his wife lived and so um, he went over to Europe obviously devastated this loss of four daughters and on his way on this new ship he actually went by where the ship sank where his daughters died and so he wrote this poem is well with my soul and Kenny's going to be talking about peace today and we know that this song really talks about no matter what happens in life and all the tragedies we go through it is well with our soul because we know that we have a peace of path of all understanding from the Lord. So um kind of gives you a new perspective on seeing this and the peace that we can have it is well with our soul. Mm-hmm. 
your alarm clock. Um, let's, let's just turn to the Lord in prayer and um, let's just come to him. Father, we've just sung an amazing, amazing hymn. 
And Lord, what we've sung is, uh, it's well with my soul. Lord, we're, we're saying to you, Father, that, that we can have peace. And we do have peace. In spite of everything and anything that's going on in our lives. And Lord, when we gather together, I often think of this, and I've prayed this before. I look out and I see people, Lord, and because I know their lives, uh, a bit of their lives, and I know what they're enduring, I know, Lord, they're, it's, there's so many different scenarios that would cause us to uh, not be peaceful at all. Surgeries, grief, financial concerns, prodigal children. Lord, the list goes on and on. And Lord, I pray that today would be a day, at least, Lord, for the Lord for this time that we're that we're able to say, Lord, um, we want to be able just to open our hands to you and to to give to surrender to you, Lord, all of these things that would cause us to be anything but peaceful. And Lord, I pray that during this time we can do that. And Lord, that we can say, yes, Lord, it is well with my soul. And the reason being, Lord, is that you're there. You're my constant in life. You're my, you're my fortress. You're my deliverer. You are my salvation. And when we thank you, and as we look at the scripture today, Lord, as we pray, pray and praise you and thank you in the midst of anything that's going on in our lives, that's when we can have peace. And so we do that today, Lord. And I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. We're going to present to the Lord his tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Again, Lord, aspect of worship to be able to give, and we give, Lord, out of our abundance. We give out a small portion of what you're giving to us. And I pray, Lord, that we do that with the right attitude, the right mindset, and with the right heart. Lord, I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before I launch into the message, I want to share three brief announcements. I've actually written them down because I've gotten to that age. <laughs> write things down and you're going to forget it. Here's the first one. Uh, the Women's Supper Club is tonight at 6 o'clock, so we want to make people aware of that. Uh, please uh, uh, just take note of that. Also, uh, Ann Bayless wanted me to announce this, and this is exciting. Um, Ann came up, was it last week, Ann, that you shared the announcement about that, that Ann and Moore actually conducted a, uh, a garage sale, yard sale, whatever you want to call them today, um, and raised in, in a neighborhood of $300 plus. And since then, last week, we also had donations. So totally together, uh, we donated $600 to Samaritan's Purse for the efforts of going on. And Kip and I had an opportunity to be in Western North Carolina and see some of the path of the hurricane. We saw it this weekend when we went to visit uh, my kids and grandkids and uh, when you get begin to see it even at this point uh, three weeks later you can you can still see what's happened in the devastation and so we're very thankful for that and also Jimmy Norris has told me he wants to he wants the mic today so I'm gonna give it to, to Jimmy I think he might have a song for us is, is, is that what it is Jimmy? we'd be up for that right would we be all ready for that if you want the service short, you got that right. <laughs> now, on behalf of the deacons, Kenny, we just wanted to give you a little token of our appreciation. How much you mean to us. The leadership that you provide us. And it's a fact. I know that you walk with the Savior beside you every day. I see him. I see you put him first. You said you keep us grounded. And with that, we totally appreciate it. And with that, we love you. Oh, thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I still would like to have heard a song, but that's okay. <laughs> 
If you have your Bibles or if you have your phones, would you go to Philippians 4? It's a very familiar scripture passage. We're going to look at it together again. We're going to actually dig into it a little bit. Philippians 4, and we're going to be starting with verse 4, and I'm just going to read down to verse 7. Give you a chance to everyone to get there. Philippians 4, 4, 4 through 7. And it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. I want you to know that earlier this week, I spoke with someone on the phone who immediately started weeping. In between sobs, she said, Pastor Kenny, I need to say something to you. I was going to send a letter, but now I have the opportunity to tell you. And then she went on to say this. She said, your church is the only place where I find any peace in my life. I'm going to let that sink in. Every time, and then she went on to say, every time I'm there, which isn't very often because I live so far away, I experience God's peace, which I need so desperately. It's the messages, the people, the music. I know you're a small church, but you're doing something right. I just want you to know that. What do you think about her confession? For me, I just appreciated her kind words, and at the same time, I was saddened by her reality. To hear her say, the only peace that she ever experiences in her life is a one-hour church service, two or three times a year. And then I thought, do you think she's unusual in really experiencing true peace in her life? Or is that more of a constant than we realize? Singer-songwriter Alana Morissette is quoted as saying, peace of mind for five minutes, that's what I crave. And I think that Alana Morissette and my anonymous phone caller put their finger on what people truly desire and really experience, and that is peace, a 14-karat gold piece, an uncluttered, let's describe it, an uncluttered, restful, contented, calm, state of mind. How do we experience peace like that? Where do we pan the streams for this gold? Because let me tell you, there's a lot of fool's gold out there which promises peace and does not deliver. And all you need to a proof of that is to Google it. I want to share some. I, I enjoyed that this week. Do you know there's an online website called Peace of Mind? which can be found at, get this, www.tranquilizers.com. No comment even needed. Then there's Peace of Mind Pet Care and Peace of Mind Senior Care. So if I can just hire someone to care for Rover and keep Grandma, I'll supposedly have lasting peace of mind. Okay. I don't believe that. Do you know that then there's Peace of Mind Moral and Logical Consulting Services? where you can hire, get this, your personal, ethical, logical analysis, analysis, there it is. That's a mouthful, I can't even get it out. Their trailer reads, reason is the best guide we have for improving our lives and finding personal peace and happiness. Most of us were not taught in a systematic way how to reason, and so it often happens that reason fails people when they need it the most. You know, I guess I've been wrong all these years. Because I've always thought that depending on my reasoning was an obstacle to my peace. And that's what the Bible tells me anyway. And then there's my personal favorite. This is, I really enjoy this. Peace of Mind Records, which specializes in heavy metal music. So headbanging is the key to a lasting peace of mind, right? How about a company called Peace of Mind Investigations? You want peace of mind, then you hire a private investigator 
to dig up dirt on your enemy or your cheating spouse. That will give you lasting peace. Or you might shop at Peace of Mind Emporium Mall in Rutland, Vermont. Maybe it's just me, but I just don't see peace and mall in the, they don't seem to gel together. Anybody else with me there? But lastly, you could purchase the Peace of Mind Subliminal Hypnosis CD. Their ad reads, bring yourself the peace you are seeking. Plug in this program at bedtime and your subconscious will do the rest. Now mind you, this is the same subconscious which leads me to dream stressful dreams like stepping into the pulpit without notes or wearing my pants. So I'm to trust my subconscious to give me lasting peace of mind? I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. So how do you, how do you achieve lasting peace of mind? Do you stare at a lava lamp? Do you burn incense? Do you buy an aquarium? Do you up your life insurance? Do you build a bomb shelter? Do you refuse to watch the news? These are, these are all methods for, these are all, this is all fool's gold, if you will. So where do you and I find genuine peace? Well, today what I want you to do is, I invite you to join me to pan the stream of God's word to find this true 14 karat gold piece. And I believe Kevin has it. We're gonna put this up on the, the scripture up on the, on the uh, screens, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And if you can see it, uh, well, let's read it together. We'll read this in unison, and it begins such. Ready? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Now, do you see the gold? that is buried in verse 7. And what is that gold? There it is. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Well, what do you mean by that? It's a peace which you can't explain, you can't reason it, you can't manipulate it. That sounds pretty attractive to me. So how do we experience God's peace? Philippians, I'm going to read Philippians 4, 6 from the New Living Translation. Here we go. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So there it is. You want peace? Then don't worry about anything and pray about everything. Okay, let's have our worship team come up and close in their closing song. Right? Uh, that's it, right? Can we be honest? Don't worry. Pray about everything. Doesn't that sound like Christian cliche? Something people would just say reflexively to someone else. Oh, just don't worry. You just, just pray about everything. And you might say, Paul, do you have any idea what my life is like? Anxiety is like my Siamese twin. It's part of me. I can't separate myself from it. And by the way, how do you feel about receiving cliche advice from people? Someone says, you broke off your engagement? Oh, that's okay. Just remember, there's so many other fish out there in the sea. <laughs> or I'm so sorry you lost your husband. God must have needed him up there more than he did down here. Does counsel like that leave you feeling peaceful? Allow me to share a snippet of what Paul's life was like when he wrote these holy inspired, Holy Spirit inspired words that we read together. He wasn't lounging on a cruise ship with an ice cold sweet tea in one hand and sunscreen in the other. He was imprisoned in Rome. Waiting to plead his case before a Roman emperor named Nero. Do you remember Nero from your history books? Nero hated Christians. He literally burned down half of Rome and pinned the arson charge on Christians. I'd say Paul had plenty to be anxious about. And yet in the midst of his anxiety-inducing scenario, Paul's saying, look, here's what works for me. This isn't just flippant, flippant cliche-written advice I'm offering here. I'm offering you the truth of God. Now against Paul's backdrop, I think we owe it to him to study what he's saying. So here's what he, let's, let's look at this together. We're going to walk through this scripture passage. 
Paul begins with these words, do not be anxious about anything. Now, I know what you're thinking. Come on, Paul. That's a huge ask. Anxious for nothing? How about being anxious every day except for Sundays? That might work a little better. In the original language, Paul is talking about living a life of perpetual anxiety. We could translate Paul's words to say, the presence of anxiety is unavoidable, but the prison of anxiety is optional. That's the problem. And then Paul begins to share the tools available to free us from anxiety. In, in the first verse again, in, in 1b, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. To summarize Paul's teaching, the road to peace is paved with prayer. Amen. The road to peace is paved with prayer. Now, before you zone me out, and I begin sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher. Do you remember? Wah, wah, wah. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Wah, wah, wah. Let's be honest about prayer. Can we really be truthful? Is prayer really your first response when anxious thoughts come? Because so often Christians undervalue and discount the power of prayer. You know how many times I've heard people say something like this? All we can do now is pray. In other words, our last resort is prayer. It's like you're a coach whose team is down 15 with two minutes to go. And you look down the end of your bench and God is chomping at the bed. Put me in, coach. I can win this game. And, and you're like, okay, God, get in there and see what you can do. Is that your mindset about prayer? But the Bible teaches that prayer isn't our last line of defense, but our first line of offense. Look, at, we have some scripture to look at here. Psalm 50, 15. I believe you have. There it is, Kevin. And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Then we move over to Hebrews 4, 16. I think you have that too, Kevin. Yes. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. In James, James, uh, Jesus' brother writes, you don't have, why? Because you don't ask, you haven't prayed. I don't know if you've ever thought of it this way, but prayer was never meant to be a concealed, carry spiritual weapon. Where I keep it hidden and holstered until I'm fresh out of options. Prayer is our greatest weapon that we have in combating anxiety, but it's powerless unless we use it. So we first pray, believing that prayer has the power to, to move the heart of God and the power to transform us. And here's what's fascinating. I think I might have shared this once before a while back, but did you know that includes your brain? Did you know that scientifically we can prove that prayer changes the chemistry in our brains? Neurologists used to believe that our brains didn't change after adolescence. Did you know that? Can I, can I get an amen and a praise God that, that our brains didn't freeze when we turned 15? Anybody else? <laughs> But neuroscience has discovered that our brains continue to change and continue to rewire itself through the neural pathways. And neuroscientific studies show that prayer actually changes our brains. I'm quoting Dr. Carolyn Leaf, who wrote the book Switch on Your Brain. She said this, it's been found that 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over an eight week period can change the brain to such an extent that it can be measured on a brain scan. Can you believe that? Amazing. Do you think that's coincidence? Just as toxic anxiety ridden thoughts harm your brain, prayer heals your brain. It transforms your brain. It renews your mind. 
So Paul's prescription for anxiety and lasting peace is prayer. But what kind of prayer? Because not all prayer qualifies as an anxiety cure. For example, how about this prayer? We've all and we probably all prayed this. You ready? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Who came up with that prayer to teach a four-year-old who's anxious about monsters under his bed? <laughs> you might die tonight, and if you do, you better pray it's God who takes your soul. That's supposed to give a kid peace, right? Seriously, Paul has some specific instructions for anxiety-free in prayer. Here's what he says. Pray in every situation. Nothing is too small to bring to God. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. Lord, I'm worried about getting my tooth pulled. And I'm worried if I can afford it. God... I'm afraid of driving home at night. I'm not comfortable with that, especially if it rains. Lord, I'm worried that text I sent will be misinterpreted. Everything. And secondly, Paul advocates we petition God in prayer. Another word for petition, you've heard this, is supplication. The Greek word for supplication is diomai, which means to strongly desire to yearn for to beg it conveys a very strong and urgent request this is prayer with emotion tied to it I love the story of a stay at home mom who had a five year old daughter and one day she said to her daughter she said honey mommy needs a little time alone with God and I'll be right in the next room if you need me mommy's going to have her devotions Ten minutes, the, the phone, ten minutes later, the phone rang and her daughter answered and said, Mommy's busy right now. She's having her emotions. <laughs> and I love that story because I love her choice of words. When we petition God, we engage in heartfelt, emotional cries to the Lord. This isn't, Lord, bless my life. Or, Lord, just be with me. This is... This is, Father, I'm asking for a miracle. Oh, Lord, I desperately need you or I'm not going to be able to make it. These are, oh, God, prayers. Do you know what I'm talking about? The prayers begin with, oh, God. Paul says we pray in every situation. We petition the Lord, and then he adds this phrase, with thanksgiving. Why does Paul add this phrase? This critical caveat. On 1 Thessalonians 5.18, here's what we read. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You say, hold on, Pastor Kenny. Thank God when I'm stressed? Yes, especially then. And why is that? Well, do you believe God knows more about the human brain than all, than all of the greatest psychologists, psychiatrists, and neuroscientists put together? I do. And God says, look, I hardwired the human brain. So listen to me when I tell you that thankfulness is anxiety's antidote. Test me in this. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. When you and I are anxious, the loudest voice in our heads is our own. Anxiety is an obsessive concern for me, myself, and I. And whose voice is often drowned out in that circumstance? God's. And anxiety is also lives in a land of lack. I'm anxious because I'm, I'm, I'm worried that I don't have enough money. I'm worried that I don't, won't have a good enough job. I wonder if my wife is going to truly understand me. I wonder if my health is going to continue to be blessed. So thankfulness brings God's center focus in my mind and reminds me of what I do possess in God. Now we have two, I want to talk about two people in our church family. Here at GACC. They're not here today, so it's easier to talk about them in a good way. They amaze me, they bless me. 
Here are the two people. Jill Dorman and Jean, Jean Mason. Now, what do we know about Joe and Jean? We know that they both share an anxiety-inducing scenario which would elevate anyone's blood pressure and cause many sleepless nights. And that is they're both dealing with the dreaded C word, cancer. Joe is two-thirds of her way through her chemo treatments. And Jean is wheelchair-bound in an assisted living facility with little hope of ever walking again. But whenever I talk to these godly, two godly women, I've noticed something they both share. I don't hear either one of them ever questioning God. Saying things like, why is God allowing this to happen to me? I don't sense any self-pity in them. I've never heard, I don't, uh, I don't deserve this. I don't hear them saying, why is God allowing this to happen to me? And instead, this, these are the kind of things I hear from them. God has blessed me so much. God is so good to me. With God by my side, I'm going to make it no matter what happens. And what I sense in them, the both of them, is I always sense this, this gratitude, this, this thankfulness that emanates from them. And you might say, well, you're the pastor. What are they going to say? No. This is who they are. If you know them, this is who they are. And as a result, of they're, they're two of the most positive people and peaceful people I've ever met. Can I get an amen? Yeah. It's really true. And what's the secret? It's the gratitude. And it's the thankfulness, even in spite of this anxiety inducing scenario that they're both dealing with. So here is God's promise. If you petition God with thankfulness, if you pray to God with thankfulness, God promises this, and it's Philippians 2, 7, in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, how many of you know that this verse is true? Not only because it's written in God's word, but because you've lived it. You've lived it. I know it's true because God showered me with peace in the midst of some of the most anxious inducing moments of my life. Being fully paralyzed and drowning on the sandy bottom of a lake. Hoping to find my depressed, suicidal wife who was missing for 13 hours. I had peace. Lying on an operating table moments before anesthesia kicked in. Peace. What's your story? How many of you could confess that you need genuine 14 karat gold piece? Not tomorrow, today. I need that today. So here is what Jesus himself promises you and me. John 14, 27, he writes, or he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, if you notice, as we begin to wrap this up, Jesus taught two, two different concepts of peace. He said there's the worldly peace, which is the fool's gold that we've been talking about this morning, and there's the godly peace, the genuine, authentic, real, lasting peace. So what's the difference? The world bases its, its peace on resources and treaties and contracts and politicians and counselors and security councils and, and laws, while God's peace is based upon relationship, a relationship with Jesus. The world's peace is achieved through ingenuity and ability and hard work. God's peace is a gift received by faith. The world enjoys peace when there's an absence of trouble and conflict. Someone wants to find peace as that glorious moment in history when everybody stands around reloading. But we can enjoy God's peace in spite of trouble 
and conflict because of the presence of His Holy Spirit within us. So again, how many of you today need the genuine peace of God? If not tomorrow, but today. So I understand, I want to make sure I'm right on this, but I think we have a closing song, and it's not going to be sung, it's going to be listened to. So here's what I want to invite you to do. I want you to just really uh, be as peaceful and relaxed as you can, listen to this music, listen to the words. And if any of you during the song need to come for an altar of prayer, this is what it's all been about, right? If you want peace, you come to the altar, well, you come to pray. Petition God with thankfulness and believing that if we do that, that he is going to provide us with what? A peace that passes all understanding. So if I can't end this message without opening this altar, for any of you who might like to come and pray at this altar, but you can certainly do that in your seat as well. But let's hear that song and let's turn our thoughts to the God of peace.
say, Pastor Kenny, would you pray for me because I do need peace. And I ask that uh, you remember me in prayer. If that's you, would you just put up your hand real quick? A lot of folks in this room. Let's pray together. Father, you know the human heart like no one else. And Lord, you did not need to see a hand raised because you already know. And I want to pray for everyone, Lord, who did raise their hand. And he said, Lord, Lord I, I need prayer. Because, Lord, um, I'm dealing with anxiety. I'm dealing with worry. And I want to have peace in the midst of it. I want to be able to say, it is well with my soul. And, Lord, I lift all of these people to you. And I pray, Father, that they would claim your promise that when they petition you with thanksgiving, that you will provide the peace that passes all understanding. And so, Lord, I pray that for everyone who raised their hand. And, Lord, now as we go out in this place, may we go out, Lord, knowing that we are our missionaries for you and give us the opportunity to be, in, in a sense, Lord, agents of peace to those who need it because we know where to point. And I pray that for all of us in this room. And I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.